hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sophie Fanon. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to a kind of writing vlog. This is more of a travel vlog, I'll be honest, but there were a lot of writing lessons learned in this little vacation that we took. So kind of a writing vlog, but mostly a travel vlog. In this video, my family and I go to Las Vegas, very fun. Um, and I also finish writing the first chapter of draft one, of Project Glass. <laughs> it doesn't seem that exciting, that interesting, that monumental, um, but it was a very good lesson learned in um, comparing myself to my past self. So let's just let's just get into it. So as a family, we have been to Vegas once before. It was like a couple years ago, maybe three. I think it was two though. Where's the light? Doesn't he look like Acorn? I have no idea. And we had a couple places we wanted to return to. One of those was Guy Fieri's restaurant. So good, so good. His trash can nachos are actually from heaven, I think. They're so good, they have beans in them, and I don't like beans, and I could care less about them having beans in them, but I digress. Very good food. And afterwards, I got like a ginormous cookie from a sweets shop place a little bit further down from the restaurant. That was great too. That was delicious. <laughs> but this was the same day that we drove in to Vegas. Nothing else happened after we ate. We just went back to our rental house and chilled out. And I do recall trying to write that night because uh, I wanted to start the trip off on a good note, <laughs> writing wise. And then I realized that I had an assignment due that night um, for my math class <laughs> that I completely forgot about. So I spent the night doing that so fun but that was my last assignment that was due before my spring break which was when we were on vacation so we were good it was fine <laughs> all was well in the world i did not have to worry about math for the rest of the week big dub Then the next day we went to Omega Mart, which you probably have heard of on like Instagram or TikTok or something. And honestly, this was probably the part of the trip I was the most excited about. <laughs> um, I had wanted to go when we went last. And I think that was when Omega Mart first opened up, but we got to go this time. We got to go this time. I convinced them we bought tickets. <laughs> and personally, this place did not disappoint. I mean, you enter in on the grocery store the omega mart um which is already got like a weird vibe like oh what's why is this place like it's a grocery store but it's slightly off like oh what's going on and then you get into the hidden parts of <laughs> omega mart and every room in that like back area is a different sensory experience and there's like lore behind omega mart the the supermarket and its connection to these weird rooms in the back. It was so cool. It was so cool. And this leads into my next topic, which is the absurd amount of writing inspiration I got on this trip. Without spoiling anything about Omega Mart, it's a mix of like seemingly normal grocery store that's kind of like got some oddities, you know, they got some weird products going on, but it's like it's a grocery store to like a company trying to manufacture wormholes or trying to open up a wormhole. And it's it's like it shouldn't make sense that they connect, but it does. <laughs> and and how you can go throughout the exhibit and discover all that is so fun. And the transition from the grocery store into the weird sci-fi back rooms is like the back of a grocery store like literally you have like a break room with like training videos playing on the tv and the corporate offices in the very back and all of it's been like overrun by these weird plants and like all these weird lights and nothing works properly and like calendars are filled with like weird events and like weird project updates it was so cool it was such a cool way to do world building <laughs> i know it's immersive it's an immersive experience but how 
much you were able to learn about this world and what's going on and like how you could like piece it together yourself it was so fun now this was not the last time i got some good good writing inspiration on this trip um but it was definitely the strongest inspiration i got the entire time and i would love to go back to this place and now that i've seen everything and i've experienced everything or everything everything i could find <laughs> i would want to go back and like take notes almost to do like research um about subtle world building about just like introducing this whole universe in like just the most random ways like schedules schedules people have like in planners on their desks or like letters that people were writing to the town council about like weird phenomena but they were like complaint letters like they were fed up with it and just really putting this world into the environment does that make sense i would love to go back and just like treat it as like a crash course <laughs> in world building the way that they portrayed the world building is how i want to be able to portray world building but it is quite expensive to get there and there's a lot of people there so who knows when that'll happen anyways <laughs> after omega mart that same day we saw awakening which is a new ish show um in vegas it's kind of circus soleil e and i found it on tiktok we were looking for shows and things to do in vegas um so we could fill up our time and it looked intriguing and i was like okay this is cool and we got the tickets we got the tickets and once again did not disappoint i don't expect it to disappoint if it's a major show on the vegas strip <laughs> we none of us no one in the group had any idea what we were getting into until we sat down like literally i didn't even know the premise of the show we were about to watch or that it even had a story um until we sat down and i opened up my program <laughs> and read the synopsis really went into it blind but it was it was incredible and then once again more more writing inspiration specifically world building inspiration it is a story of light versus dark um who are two people <laughs> it's two people they they rule the world um and it's also a story of the four elements you know earth air water fire all that jazz at first glance it seems like a really simple story like oh yeah everyone does like the four elements and like stories surrounding the good and evil of that or whatever but i mean it's a great it's a great premise i i do not get tired <laughs> i do not get tired of the four elements and what particularly inspired me or that i saw as like oh yeah this this i can take note of in like my writing was since it is a, a dance centered show there was no dialogue there was well there was dialogue but there wasn't a ton of dialogue especially when it came to the four elemental kingdoms there stories their personality their lore was told through dance and music and and their costumes i loved their costumes all all four kingdoms had such cool costumes and such cool props it was insane it was insane but it got me thinking about the more subtle ways that people can be described especially like in a larger cultural group how they dress of course and like how they behave and then something even more abstract like the music that all four kingdoms dance to the way it was used for each kingdom and for darkness and light i loved it i loved it it was a more abstract way to represent these kingdoms but it worked and it got me thinking how in writing can you portray that because there's no music <laughs> i mean if you do an audiobook maybe but on paper you cannot listen to the book i know i'm sorry but how else how else could you portray that kind of idea of like this is what they sound like <laughs> musically this is what this group sounds like like how could you translate that into writing can you tell i love world building can you tell that already <laughs> are you aware or do i have to say it again and then finally the next morning i cracked open project glass and began writing chapter one i had already written a bit of chapter one i think i had written like a little less than half of it so on this trip i didn't even write the whole chapter chapter one i wrote like half which is worse <laughs>
took me a whole week to write half of a chapter, which isn't even that long. I think it's maybe 1400 words at the most. Um, but anyways, <laughs> we finally started that. And this is where the comparison was really bad. For chapter one, I kind of give myself a slight pass because I like chapter one. I liked chapter one in the zero draft. I liked chapter one when I rewrote it for draft one in like August of 2022 or something. And I wanted to keep that vibe for draft one this time around. So I constantly kept referencing that previous draft one to try and keep that same idea, that same vibe, that same sort of environment. And that really slowed me down because I wanted to add new information. I wanted to add new stuff into this first chapter that I knew now that I had re-outlined the book, but at the same time, I wanted to keep the same things from that previous attempt. So it was very back and forth, and I feel like the chapter probably came out kind of jagged and weird. Um, I haven't reread it, but I feel like upon revision, I will see that chapter one's kind of wonky because I kept going between wanting to just rewrite that previous iteration of chapter one and to make it something new, to improve it, to add stuff to it. Yeah, so it ended up taking me a week <laughs> to write like 600, 800 words, but you know, comparison is the thief of joy or whatever kind of sucked the fun out of writing chapter one because I was so worried about not getting it right. And then when I started writing chapter two, I started doing the same thing because I liked the way I had started that chapter in August two years ago. <laughs> so I started reading that and trying to like recreate that in the new draft. And I was like, you know what, girl, don't. You know how this went. You don't need to do this again. So I closed that draft from August and wrote chapter two. I wrote the scene that I liked from the previous draft and kept the same idea, but I did not go line for line and just try to like line edit almost. And guess what? I wrote that chapter in like two days instead of a week. That's a major improvement. <laughs> and of course, at a certain point, I'll have to go back to previous iterations and reference and everything. Like that's, that's how you improve a draft, but that's like way into the future. This right now is draft one. We do not need to be doing all that. <laughs> We're not going to be doing all that. We're gonna let the story be the story and not worry about comparison. Yes, yes, are we in this? Cool. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> the following day was all about like full body immersion. We started day at this place called the Illuminarium, which let us walk on the moon. That was fun. <laughs> it's like a room that's completely covered in projections and it's got like an interactive surface. Like on the floor, you could leave like footprints on the moon or like break asteroids with your feet. And it was both walking on the moon and also a little space show. So, you know, I was having fun. I was having fun. After that, it was time for the star of the show. The star of Vegas, <laughs> right now, the sphere. Yeah, the multi-billion dollar ball. We went, we went, and it was actually insane. It was actually so cool. <laughs> so when you buy a ticket to the sphere, there are two parts to it. There is the show, the show that you buy the ticket for and the seat for, and there is a sort of like exhibit thing beforehand that shows you all the technology that they're developing it comes off very dystopian <laughs> it comes off so dystopian this exhibit um beforehand like one of those dystopias was like a huge class divide where the rich people are like bragging about like robot servants or like dresses like made out of holograms or something i don't know then there's like everyone else who's like starving and dying um and then the rich people 
hold these exhibits for themselves to like convince themselves that there's actually nothing wrong. <laughs> that everything's okay. That's what it that's what it very much felt like walking around and listening to robots talk to us and everything was a uh, fluorescent blue <laughs> and constantly talking about human progress and um I got a little scared. And everything was expensive. I bought my sister a Mountain Dew, a bottle of Mountain Dew. It was seven dollars. If that's not dystopia, I don't know what is. Also, there was a lot of bars. I went up like five floors. Every floor had like three bars. That also can't be good, right? Like that's also dystopia. Everywhere I went, alcohol, alcohol. I I'm like, this is too much expensive technology for this much booze, but go off, go off. We're in Vegas, drink, drink till your heart's content, I guess. But that being said, the show we saw was so cool, so, so cool. I tried to get videos. I tried to get videos to show on here but it cannot compare to what it looked like in person it literally feels like you're there <laughs> the video is you is <laughs> your vision hearing the crowd's reactions to everything made it like even better like when the video first started going full screen on the entire sphere and everyone like gasped and they were like whoa that was cool <laughs> That was fun. Um, the show was also a sci-fi. It was like, it was called Postcard from Earth. And it was like a documentary thing that these people, these actors in the show were being shown to remind them of what Earth was because they were people who had left the solar system to uh, like colonize other planets. That was cool. I didn't know that was going to happen. I thought it was just going to be a documentary, but that was really cool. I like that. Then the last thing that was on our list <laughs> was to go to the buffet in the Wynn Hotel because we had done that the time before and it was so good. So we had to go back. Um, and I didn't get any footage of that because I was too busy stuffing my face with food. Be honest, you probably would have done the same. So uh, don't blame me. Okay. I was hungry. We went. We went to the buffet. I trust. Trust. But that is it. That, <laughs> that was my trip. It was so sci-fi heavy that I got so inspired to write sci-fi that I ended up outlining the entire Project Star trilogy. You've probably seen the video. Um, if you haven't, it's up there. It was so sci-fi heavy that I literally had to get science fiction out of my head. <laughs> it had to go. And I learned a valuable lesson. Don't compare myself to my past self. I feel like that's something every writer on YouTube says, like, oh, don't do it. Like you're gonna you're like wasting your time almost um and you're like taking the fun out of writing it's a good lesson it's one that needs to be learned and said but i feel like it's one that you have to experience yourself and correct it yourself to really understand because you can be like oh yeah of course why would i compare myself to myself two years ago that's stupid but then you do it <laughs> and you realize oh <laughs> it's easier to do this than uh previously thought but that could also just be me because I'm very stubborn and I won't listen to other people until I realize they are right um, by learning the hard way. So I don't know, <laughs> take this as a lesson for yourself if you want um, or don't, be like me, learn on, <laughs> learn on your own. But yeah, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out. Sorry, this was more of a travel vlog than a writing vlog, but the inspiration was, was swimming. So I had to share this with you guys. I got to do these things, it was so cool, and I wanted to share it, and um, what I got out of it. So, thank you so much for sticking around. Um, how's writing going for you? Camp Nano is right around the corner. Are you ready? Mentally, physically, literally, figuratively, I don't know. In any sense of the word, are you ready? <laughs> Let me know everything in the comments, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace. Bye.